think about this. We wanted to have a different conversation about that. Let's discuss the 2016 race. If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Your one new source. This is News Center One. Good evening, I'm Caroline Patrikas. Thanks for joining us. You're watching News Center One at 5.30. It's one of the biggest complaints in politics. Leaders are not accessible to the people they represent. But that wasn't the case in Rapid City today, as dozens of people turned out for a coffee and conversation event with Senator Mike Rounds. Concerned citizens with a variety of topics on their minds peppered the senator with questions, ranging from the country of origin labeling to health care. And while Rounds touched on a number of different subjects, one overwhelming question was brought up time and again. How does a broken Washington take care of Americans? Anything that we can do to bring attention to the mismanagement that's occurring within the federal government in all of the agencies will help us. Whether you're talking the Department of Education, whether you're talking, whether you're talking the VA, in all of those areas there's ways to make things more efficient. But it's even worse than that. It is intrinsic within the federal government itself. I look at even the way that the United States Senate runs and the amount of money that is wasted within the United States Senate and you realize that this is every place. It is pervasive within the Washington scene. Whatever those individuals who are running for, for, the, for the presidency of the United States can do to bring more attention to the mismanagement within the VA, that's going to help us. And after the lengthy question and answer session had run over time, Senator Rounds stuck around to meet with individuals and take pictures, leaving attendees with lasting memories. U.S. Senator John Thune also offering his advice to presidential candidates this election cycle. While there are a number of topics he would like to see discussed by candidates, there is one topic in particular that Thune thinks needs to be front and center. I think there are a lot of important topics, but if I had to sort of home in on one or two. I think that candidates are going to have to be, in very specific terms, uh, talk about what they would do to get the economy growing again, to get wages up. Wages for U.S. workers slowed to a crawl last quarter. According to the Department of Labor, wages and other compensation rose 0.2 percent in the second quarter of 2015. That's the smallest quarter-to-quarter -quarter increase in over 30 years. South Dakota Attorney General Marty Jackley releasing an explanation today for a proposed constitutional amendment dealing with elections. The amendment would establish a nonpartisan elections in South Dakota. Candidates would not be identified by party affiliation on either the primary or general election ballot. The amendment would also require secret ballot elections for certain legislative offer officers. Jackley's explanation is required by law. His filing with the Secretary of State's office is another step in process for the proposal supporter to get the proposals on the November 2016 ballot. Jackley also reminding the public that the state law prohibits gifts or promises in exchange for signing initiative petitions. The debate over the proposed Keystone XL pipeline continues. An associated press review of every cross-border pipeline application since 2004 shows that the Keystone review has been anything but ordinary. Under a George W. Bush era executive order, border crossing oil pipelines require a presidential permit granted only after a government-wide review coordinated by the state government. President Barack Obama has deflected criticism about the delays by arguing his administration is following Bush's directive in the ordinary way. Since Bush's order, the government has taken an average of 478 days to process all other applications. Keystone has been waiting nearly seven years, more than five times the average. Thousands joined at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center this afternoon. They're saying goodbye to members of the South Dakota Army National Guard as they get ready to head overseas. 162 members of the Guard's 155th Engineer Company received an alert in February that they would be deploying to Kuwait in the summer of 2015. Now the entire unit joining for a send-off ceremony before they depart for training at Fort Bliss in Texas. Among those in attendance today, Governor Dennis Dugard, United States South Dakota Senators John Thune and Mike Rounds. And as the troops leave tomorrow, they're spending those last few moments with families and friends. A little nervous, but I'm ready to go. You know, I've been preparing for it for about three, four months now, you know, doing all the training and everything. So right now I'm just ready to get, get to Texas and get ready to go to Kuwait. So. 
Well, there's a little bit of stress, there's anxiety, there's some excitement. Um, gave us a good opportunity to train the company and, and be ready to do our mission. Um, it's tough on the families with the uh, anticipation of the separation from the soldiers. The unit is mobilizing in support of operations Enduring Freedom, New Dawn, and Noble Eagle. The 155th also served in Kuwait in 2002 to 2003. And here's a look at today's markets on Wall Street. And the Dow Jones dropping less than a point to 17,403. The Nasdaq up eight points at 5,044. S&P 500 up two points at 2,086. And gold up $15.30 to $1,123.10 on this day of trade. The oldest lumber yard in the Black Hills is closing its doors after 40 long years. John Ziegler dug the footing for the original lumber yard and has been providing home improvement products to Rapid City for decades. Closing down Ziggy's is a personal choice. The Ziegler's have raised their family here, made their business their life, but now it's time for a change. Ziggy's is selling everything they've got, roofing lumber, building materials, fencing stoves, and much more. We want the people to come in and celebrate with us, celebrate our 40 years on it. Uh, like I say, there's two big sales in, in business. One's a grand opening and the other one's a going out of business sale. And we, we're, we hope our going out of business sale will be just as big or bigger than our grand opening was 40 years ago. And the liquidation sale will kick off tomorrow and will last until everything is gone. The Ziegler's thank the Rapid City community for its fantastic support over the years and it'll certainly be sad to watch yeah. them go but yeah. who doesn't love a good sale i know i know yeah they're, they're getting rid of everything they've been when i was going to college here you know they were still here so that they've been here a long 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 time carolyn a long time yeah yeah <laughs> if, if they were here when i was going yeah long time yeah it's sad to see them go Absolutely. Uh, a few little showers got a few little showers on the old radar let's uh, pop that on up there you can see them up in butte county northern butte county uh, Harding County, just a few little isolated uh, thunderstorms, and we see a few little showers out over Wyoming. I don't expect to see much from this at all tonight, but we'll just keep a close eye on that. There was always that possibility of another little shower popping up in the Black Hills. But these temperatures, oh my goodness, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So we're going to expect to see some very warm temperatures over the next few days as well. All righty. Thank you so much, Bob. And we'll get more in his forecast. But first, more news coming up after the break. You're watching News Center 1 at 530. We'll be right back. This is News Center 1 with Chad Olson. Sports with Justin Wickersham. And weather with Chief Meteorologist Bob Riggio. Negabowers Fine Jewelry has been the Black Hills trusted jeweler for 70 years. To celebrate, we are having a sale with sale prices up to 50% off throughout the store with little exclusion. Negabowers Fine Jewelry, 601 Main Street, downtown Rapid City. Papa Murphy's pizzas are hot. Because you bake all those fresh pizza ingredients in your own oven. And you can taste the difference. When it cools a little, of course. Fill your table with an almost too hot Papa's Perfect Pizza. The best combination of half premium pepperoni, half Hawaiian. Just $9 for a large. Fresh made, fresh baked. Papa Murphy's. Love at 425 degrees. Fisher Home Galleries carries some of the finest brand name furniture in America and is home to the exclusive Flex Steel Gallery. With upholstered styles and your choice of over 1,500 designer fabrics to choose from, you will be able to create your own dream home at the guaranteed lowest prices in South Dakota. And best of all, the beauty and comfort is made to last. The Flex Steel Blue Steel Seat Spring and Frame are guaranteed for a lifetime. Invest in better quality furniture at Fisher Home Galleries, where beautiful homes begin on West Main and Rapid City. Menards has the sale that lets you save big on over 65,000 items. So get ready, get set, and save with an 11% rebate on everything. Hurry in and save big because now is the perfect time to save on all of your projects with an 11% rebate on everything, including sale prices. That's savings on top of savings. Get everything you need with an 11% rebate going on now.
What will be doesn't have to be. Negabauer's Fine Jewelry has been the Black Hills trusted jeweler for 70 years. To celebrate, we are having a sale with sale prices up to 50% off throughout the store with little exclusion. Negabauer's Fine Jewelry, 601 Main Street, downtown Rapid City. Drive Granite Automotive. The role of a Thunderbird crew member may seem like a far-fetched dream, but over 127 men and women serve in support roles to the pilots, each playing an important role. New Center One's Anya Mueller talks with another South Dakota native with the Thunderbird squad. Part of Sergeant Flint's job is to keep the planes running safe and efficient. Right now here in the Maintenance Operations Center, what I do is uh, after every flight, when the, when the pilots get done, they come in, in here and they log all of their airframe times and they will tell me if there's any discrepancies uh, with the airplane and I will tell the appropriate agency uh, what needs to be fixed. And then uh, on top of all of that, I log all of it into the computer uh, so that it can all be tracked appropriately and we can make sure that the discrepancies get fixed. That way the airplanes are safe for the, for the pilots to go out and do the mission at hand. Flint has served with the Thunderbirds a little over a year and a half and says that this career is unlike any he has had before. So it's, it's different than a typical unit simply, simply because we do have so many different career fields that are all working together. It brings everybody a, a, a different perspective of exactly how the Air Force functions. Flint describes his position as a modern day blacksmith doing a little bit of welding and machining on both aircraft and ground support.